in other languages such as Java and C Sharp. Sorry, I keep bringing them up, but I know that uh, my students in my class are familiar with at least Java. Uh, static variables basically are variables that are shared among all instances of a class. And the same is true in C++. If we have a static variable in a class, then yes, it is shared among all instances. But C++, being that it's not purely object-oriented, meaning it can have uh, global functions and global variables, there's also another type of static, which is function statics. And so, let me just show you a little bit how that works. Hmm, iTunes, go away. So, I'm going to make a int here and call it current value and assign it. Oh, let's just start it out at zero. And let's make a f function here, new value. And what I'm going to do in here is I'll say int temp value. I'm going to store the current value. And then I'm going to return temp value. Like so. But before I do that, I'm going to say current value gets new value. So f takes a value and returns the previous value that it was passed. That's all it does. So down here in main, see out f5. And let's just, I don't know, 5, 23, 2, 18. So let's put a breakpoint right here. I hit F9 to put a breakpoint there. Um, I'm doing that because my step into is acting up. Uh, let's start the debugger. F10. Build started, build succeeded. So um, see out F5. So I pass 5 in, so new value is 5. Current value is 0 because we initially assigned it to 0. So temp value will get 0. Um, current value gets new value. So uh, we're going to store the 5 that was passed in. And then we're going to return temp value, which was the previous value of current value. So temp value is 0. So F10. And uh, let's look at the uh, output here. It's a 0. OK. So let's, let's um, let me get rid of the breakpoint here. And I'm just going to step over these executions. F10. So 23. Well, I passed in 5 before. So I'm going to print the return of F23, which is 5. So I get 5. You can just see these kind of just chain uh, follow each other. So 0, 5, 23, 2. Simple little program. Now, the only way that, that I am able to do something like this is by storing the state of current value. Notice I defined current value outside of F's scope, which works, but the problem is uh, we like to have minimal scope, really meaning that current value only has meaning to this F function. I could have another function down here, void, moo, and it does stuff, and other functions, but but really current value, this variable, is only useful within F. It's, it's, it should be private to F. And so C++ allows us to do that by simply just taking this off of here and putting it in here. Oopsie. Let me, uh, I got some Visual Studio fighting me. Let me go back. So taking that out of there and putting it in there. I can define it right here in F. The only problem is now it's a stack-based value, which will receive, or stack-based variable. So basically every time I run F, current value will be assigned 0. So let me just uh, execute this again. And... Uh, They'll start it, they'll succeed it. See, we always, current value resets every time I execute F, which isn't the behavior we had before, right? When we declared current value outside out here, then we had that following the leader kind of behavior. Um, so the way we can do that in C++, get that behavior, we still want the minimal scope, meaning in uh, current value is only good between these two braces. But we still want it to maintain state between every time that we execute f. So the way we do that is simply uh, make this variable static. And now it's private to f, but it is also static. So it's a lot like just uh, redeclaring it out here in the global area, but really f is the only one that can see it. So um, let's just run this again. 
and we see we're we're back to that initial behavior there. So so that's what function statics are. Um, something else to also keep in mind is they are only initialized the first time that that they're used. For example, if I if I take a current value and I put it out here, well, current value it receives its value when the program is loaded because it's in this global area out here. It's part of the program image. But once I I move it back into here, actually, uh, it doesn't receive its initial value zero until the very first time that I execute F. And I have an exercise for you in the wrestle assignment to prove that using constructors uh, that you'll see. But basically, that's that's function statics in a nutshell. They exist for every invocation of the function. And if you think of an invocation as really making an instance of that function, it's it's, it's kind of the same as as you have with class statics.